Last weekend I was sitting right here in my home office just surfing the internets for fun when I came across Zustand. It's a lightweight state management solution for React applications. So naturally I started to play around with it and pretty quickly realized that it's actually pretty good. Previously I have used tools like Redux, Redux Toolkit, Recoil or Context API for handling the state management. Most of them require quite a bit of boilerplate code and wrapping components inside of providers. Something that Zustand doesn't require. So I decided to make this video to introduce you to Zustand and show you how to quickly create a simple counter application using Zustand. So what I have done already is set up this counter component and if we take a look at the code of it, it's just the HTML or JSX for the counter. So there isn't any functionality yet. As we can see, if we click the buttons, nothing happens. So what we want to do next is actually add the functionality for this counter and see how to use Sustan for managing the state. So what I'm going to do first is actually install the Sustan package. Once that's run, I'm going to start my dev server again. And in case you were wondering, I'm just using a Next.js application to render our counter component. So to get started, let's first import a create function from Zustand, like this. And next, what we want to do is actually create our store, which is actually a hook. So let me type it out and let's see it together after that, like this. So what we are doing here is creating our counter store by using the create function from Zustand. And right now we are just defining the count variable inside of here, but we can also define other types of variables in here, for example, primitives, objects, or functions, for example. So now that we have our count stored in this store, let's use it inside of our counter component. And how we can do that is as follows. So we can get the count by using the use counter store hook and returning the state.count from it. Now we can display it over here like this and let's save this and see the browser. So nothing happened because it's zero, but what if we change the count to for example five. Now let's save it, switch back to the browser and refresh the page and we get the correct count over here. Okay, so now let's see how we can actually modify the count using these two buttons. So I'll switch back to the VS code. So what I want to do next is actually define a new function to our state that increases the count. And I'm going to call it increase count and it is a function. So I'm going to define that. And now if we want to modify a value inside of our state with a function over here, we can do it by using this set function that we get as a parameter for this function over here. I know it's a <laughs> It sounds a bit complicated, but bear with me. So we can update the state by using the set function and that takes as a parameter a function and that function gets the current state as parameter and then we can return an object from it with the new values for our state. So we want to modify the count. So we say count is count or actually state dot count plus one like this. Let's save it. And I know there is a lot of functions here. Now that I'm explaining it, it sounds pretty complicated when saying like this function gets parameter, this function and this function gets as parameter that function. It sounds a bit complicated, but once you use this, I think this is super handy and it's not that complicated. Okay, let's move on. So we defined our increase count function. So now we want to use it inside the counter. So let's do that. So we can get it the same way we got the count variable saying const and let's call it increase count equals use counter store. And then we want to return the state dot increase count like this. And now we can call that whenever this button is clicked. So I'm going to add an on click handler and it equals increase count like this. Let's save it, switch back to the browser and see if it works. And let's click the button to test it out. Looks like it's working so it's increasing the count on every click. Okay, now let's do the decrease count also. So I'm going to switch back to the VS code and define a function for decrease count like this. So it's basically the same 
but we are just decreasing the count. And now we can use it inside of our component. So let's do that like this and then bind it for the on click handler of the decrease count button like so. Let's save it, switch back to the browser and see if it works. So increase count works. How about decrease? And looks like the number is decreasing. You might have noticed that this is actually something we could have done just using the use state hook, for example, because everything happens inside this one component. So let's actually move these buttons to their own component and see how we can use the same state inside of that component too, because that's when using sustand actually comes super handy. So what I'm gonna do is create a new component called controls. And then let me add some boilerplate for this component like this. And then let's go back to the counter component, import that controls component like this, and then scroll down. And for this section over here, I'm gonna copy this and delete it and render the controls component instead, like so. And I'm gonna save it and let's just check what it looks like. So now it's rendering the controls text instead of the buttons. So what we want to do is add the buttons for the controls component. So let me do that. So I'm gonna just paste them in because I had copied them earlier. Let's save it and see the browser. So now we are getting some errors that the functions are not defined. So that's one thing we still need to do is actually copy these functions from the counter component to the controls component like this. And now if we check the browser, we can see that it says that the counter store is not defined. So what we want to do here is actually inside the counter component, let's export this use counter store like this. So now it is defined here, but we can import it inside of our controls component. So let's do that like this. So now it's defined in here. So let's see the browser, we get our buttons rendered. And now if we click them, the increase button is working and then the decrease button is also working. So all we have to do is import the use counter store hook to our component wherever we want to use that state. And it can just be defined in this one component. And now wherever we import this store, we have access to this state. So I think this is much more convenient to use because you don't have to wrap your components inside of providers and you don't have to write that much boilerplate code compared to other solutions. Of course, you should always be wary of the number of libraries that you use in your application and avoid bloating your app with tons of external libraries. But when you find a library that is helpful, you should definitely take advantage of them and not reinvent the wheel every time. For example, there is also a super helpful library for handling form state in your React application. So if you want to learn how I handle form state in my React applications, watch this video over here next.